Welcome to Inside Sim Racing and our review and first look at the Ferrari 458 Ferrari Challenge GTE wheel add-on for the T500 RS by Thrustmaster. I'm Darren Gadget here with my good buddy. Sean Cole. And today, again, we're just gonna give you a first look and a review all in one. So if you're not familiar with the T500, you've probably been on another planet the last year or so. <laughs> Came out in early 2011 as the official Gran Turismo 5 wheel mm -hmm. and pedal set for the PlayStation 3, also compatible with every title on the PC. Right. And one of our only original complaints, actually most of the community complained about the fact that it had static paddles. So that was a real difference if you were coming from a G27 and had the paddles that spun around with the wheel. Um, they did rectify that with the Formula One rim wheel that they, the add-on wheel that they did, but it was still a little different. And there was even a guy that did a mod mm -hmm. that modified the static paddles to to attach to the wheel right. and, and turn with the wheel. But none have worked like the Formula One, which right. was actually not even separate paddles. It was like the... A rocker. Like a, yeah, like a toggle or a rocker, exactly. So now Thrustmaster has come out with their own round edition that has paddles attached to the shifter. And it's basically a 458 Challenge replica, 70% scale. Okay. So the replica, so the actual rim, I'm guessing, this is an 11-inch rim, and we're gonna get to the box cover stuff in a second. But I'm, I'm guessing that the the real one is about 13, 14 inches, mm -hmm. and this new wheel is going for 129.95, and it's gonna be available for pre-order on May 6th or so. Uh -huh. Right. Right. Correct. And some more box cover stuff on this wheel. It is an official Ferrari licensed wheel. As you mentioned, it's the 458 Challenge replica wheel and it's for the T500 RS base. The rim is 11 inches or 28 centimeters in diameter with the same reinforced rubber texture you'll find on the stock T500 GT rim. The wheel weighs more than 2.6 pounds for ultra realistic inertia and force feedback. Now that was exactly what it says on the box cover, weighs more than 2.6 pounds. Sounds like 2.61. Maybe. <laughs> it has brushed metal central spokes that are two millimeters thick with metallic paint. Two large sequential paddle shifters attached to the wheel. They are also brushed metal with metallic paint and are five inches or 13 centimeters tall. And those switches are very high-end tax switches with life cycles of 10 million activations. That's a lot of cycles. A lot of pushes. <laughs> In addition to that, there's six action buttons on the wheel, a three position Manatino switch and one D-pad. It's also detachable, interchangeable with the F1 and the GT rim. So all three work on the T500 base. Yeah, so if you bought the F1 only T500, it's compatible with that or the GT. So either or. So that's all the box cover stuff. When we return, we're going to give you some pros, cons, a little more information about it, put it on the rev scale and wrap it up when we come back. GT chassis racing rigs provided by Human Racing. Go to humanracing.co.th. Welcome back to our first look and review of the Ferrari GTE 458 Challenge wheel. It's got a lot of names here. I gotta tell you, we get pretty excited every time we hear from Thrustmaster that something new is coming. And I gotta confess, this is something that you and I have been waiting for. They don't tell us what's coming. It just shows up, but we've been waiting, we've been thinking 458 wheel. It's gotta be a 458 wheel one of these days. And sure enough, they finally came out with the 458 wheel. So we're gonna get into the pros and cons and uh, give you our final thoughts and a rev scale on this new wheel by Thrustmaster. And first of all, attached paddles. That's the first pro. And they're really nice. So that's number one pro for this wheel. Also great position in relation to the wheel as mm -hmm. far as where they're at because they're right off 
right off the wheel. Right. So in close relation to where your hands are. And then solid click and a short throw. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't like too much of a throw on my paddle shifters, so I like the short throw and just high quality. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another pro for me is actually something not everybody's gonna agree with me. I like that this is not overly ergonomic. So there is a little bit of a thumb indentation, but when you grab it at nine and three or 10 and two, you're not like locked into that position. So if you're doing a little hand over hand, the wheel feels natural all the way around and I do like that. Another thing is the button placement is really good button placement. So it is a small wheel, but and I have small hands, but I find it very easy to use all of the buttons on the wheel without moving my hand at all. Especially compared to the, the stock GT rim, mm -hmm. you know, the, the buttons, the, the PS3 buttons off of your right thumb are pretty right. close. And then you got your D-pad over on the left and then you got your two buttons up top that right. are fairly close. But those ones in the middle, on this middle spoke down here, yeah, they're a little bit too far. So yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. Another one is, this just looks cool. I mean, anybody comes over, if they don't even know what your rig is, they're gonna trip out that this is the wheel sitting on your desk. Yep. Next one is the good size grip. Same grip as the GT wheel. Mm -hmm. I've always liked that grip and it just feels solid. It doesn't tweak in your hands. It's just a solid feeling grip. Uh, and speaking of solid, solid construction. This is a this is a beefy rim. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you picked it up earlier. You're like, this thing's got some weight to it. Yeah. So it's just solid construction. And then another pro is it's got that, you know, the T500 quick release system. Right. And I don't know how quick it is and I don't know how quick you really need it because the bottom line is you can't change out wheels in game anyway. Right. So you got to go out of the game, change it out and what does it take? Less than five minutes? Yeah. So it's mean, not... Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not we're not doing a pit stop and having to change wheel and pop, you know. Yeah. Get it. So quick enough. So Absolutely. it's definitely that cool quick release system. Another pro for me is the small circumference. It's a really natural feel for me, um, but that smaller feel is real quick moving, but yet you're not locked into position like on the F1. So you and I have already both experienced that each wheel we like for certain types of cars. And this one kind of filled the gap between the two existing wheels I have, the GT and the, the F1 rim. Speaking of cars, we did all of our testing at iRacing. And like Sean said, there were certain cars, like the new Kia mm -hmm. was perfect for that. The Skip Barber car, the Radical. Yeah. You know, smaller cars like that, I think it's perfect for it. Actually, I think, you know, if you don't, if you, let's say you had the GT rim and you di didn't want to buy the Formula One, but you wanted something smaller, this is perfect for that. Yeah. Uh, now, let's go to the cons mm -hmm. on the size. Let's say you had the F1 rim and you wanted to buy a round rim to do some NASCAR style racing. Now, it'll work fine. But me, I prefer a larger diameter rim for NASCAR. So I like the GT rim, the stock GT rim, a little bit better for NASCAR right. style stuff. So I think that's perfect, though. I think that's what they are actually going for. Because, again, if you look at real life race cars, each wheel for each car is specifically built around the way that car drives. Sometimes it's size you know, requirements. Sometimes it's the way the car handles. And I think Thrustmaster's done a good job of giving us those three points as well. Yep. Next con for me is that these paddles, and my fingers are a little bit longer, um, so did you have any problems with your fingers hitting the static paddles? No, but I could see how it would be a problem. Now. If you accidentally grab one of the static paddles, and this is kind of a con too, it's the same, but it's a con or a pro depending on which way you look at it. So let's say you're shifting on the right hand and you grab the right static paddle, it's the same button. Mm -hmm. It's mapped as the same button. Where on the F1 rim, those are separate buttons. Right. So the, the left or that rocker is separate than the, the, the static paddle. So I'll use those static paddles when I have the F1 rim attached as, as look left and look right. Right. When you run it with this rim, it's, they're not too close, but you just gotta get used to it. Yeah. So well, I, I mean, I, if you're running this rim, you wish the other ones weren't there. I mean, I think that's a fair statement. Yeah, and I agree with that. We taught, we even looked and see if we could take them off, but <laughs> I, I wouldn't want it because then when I put the GT rim, I need it. So. Yeah. By the way, we talked about it being a complaint at the start of the show. I got used to running like that, you know, yeah. with the static. Like I said, I've never actually had it be a problem. I could just see how someone might. Right. So what else? Uh, another con is the Manatino. As cool as it is and as much as I wanted it, because it's one of the distinct features of the 458, 
it, it doesn't stay in position. So it's like a lever that snaps back to that one position. You go to two, it snaps back. You go to off, it snaps back. I'd like it to be click, click. Me too. I think part of why they might have done that is because if you're clicking past, one is always going to be clicked twice. Right. So I think that might have been part of it. But yeah, and I'd say the last con is that the buttons, the other buttons don't have like a solid click. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's not horrible. They work great. Mm -hmm. And the pl placement, like we said, is, a, is another pro. But nice, nicely done. And you, one of your complaints was the labeling. Right. But that is the stock Ferrari challenge. Yeah, yeah. And you it, could always label over it. And a couple of them match the things that I'd map them to. So it does work. So any more cons? Uh, no, I really don't have any more cons for this wheel. Uh, okay, I mean, so final thoughts. Final Actually, rev scale. Rev scale. Um, you know, it's built as an add-on wheel to the T500. So, I mean, it's kind of one of those things that you either want it or you don't want it. And with that, I mean, I, I actually could give this a 9 or a 10. Me too. Uh, this is probably my favorite wheel for the T500 at this point. Um, so where do I put it on the scale? I'm not sure. I mean, it might come down to the which one you, what order you bought your T500. Yeah, and exactly. And if it, you're, now is it a must have? Depends. Depends on what you want to do with that T500 and, you know, whether or not you want it. Because I, I, I read Thrustmaster posted some uh, sneaks, some sneaks, but they didn't show what it was. And they asked, you know, what would you like? And people asked for a rim with the paddles attached. Yeah. So a lot of people are going to want this and like this. For $129.95, yeah. it's a good buy, definitely. Yeah. Um, must have. It really depends on who you are. So me, final thoughts. And, you know, I agree with you exactly what you said on the rev scale. And I think it's great. It's a cool wheel. We've been waiting for something like this. I like the paddles attached. I'm in heaven. Man. Yeah. I love this and, and something I've been waiting for for this. For the I agree. So. I agree. My final thoughts are really simple. Um, this is my favorite of the wheels available for the T500. If I were going to only have one, it's a no-brainer for me. It's this one. However, I have the luxury that you have. I have the GT wheel, and I'm absolutely going to use that for my big oval cars. I've got my F1 wheel. I am definitely going to use that for all the open wheel driving that I do. And now I have this one that actually does fit that void for all those tin top road racing cars that I do, or maybe some of the older school open wheeled stuff even, because that's the type of wheel you would have found in like the Lotus 79. Well, without all the buttons, but about that kind of shape. So I, I just, I like having that variety very much so. Me too. So again, uh, pre-order May 6th or right at thereabouts, $129.95 and then orders will start shipping soon after that. Uh, you can go to thrustmaster.com, find a local dealer, and uh, hopefully they'll be available in your region. Uh, if you have any questions for us about this, we'll have a thread in our forums. You can go to isrtv.com and we'll have a thread regarding this review. You can ask us questions, comment on it, whatever you like. Uh, like us on uh, Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to us here on YouTube. Anything else, Sean, before we go? No, no, just I want to get onto this one and do, do some, some racing. Absolutely. For Sean Cole, I'm Darren Ganji. We'll see you guys next time.